Hi, and welcome to this movie about Autodiscover. Today I'm going to explain a bit more about Autodiscover, how it works and how it relates to most clients' uh, environments um, that are using this feature. Um, I got a question um, of one of my blog followers about this feature, so uh, I thought it would be handy and nice to make a movie and explain a little bit more how, that, uh, how it does work. So, um, most people already know what Autodiscover does. For those who don't, Autodiscover is a feature that Microsoft implemented in its Exchange Suite um, to push settings to mail clients in order for these clients to connect to the Exchange environment. Um, actually, yeah, that's pretty simple, no? Um, however, a lot of people actually don't know how does it, yeah, how does Autodiscover work in the background? So, how does it does what it does? Um, accordingly, um, also a lot of people don't know how to troubleshoot Autodiscover. So when issues arise, a lot of people uh, don't know where to start the troubleshooting um, because they don't understand the process of Autodiscover. So to cope with this, I'm going to explain a little bit more about the Autodiscover uh, process. So um, actually, let me take a lot of, let's go to this drawing over here. Um, this is a visual represent representation um, about uh, the auto-discover process. So, on our left side over here, uh, here on the left side, we got an Outlook client or, or yeah, any other mail client, but mostly Outlook clients. Um, and on the right side. Um, we got our Active Directory out to discover, uh, and eventually we have our Exchange services. So let me put that over here. So that's our Exchange. Server. Yeah, I know. I I'm very good at drawing things, but <laughs> hey, well, uh, I'll just have to live with it. Um, so. Um, uh, how does auto discover work? Um, every time when a client is connecting to the exchange environment, uh, and um, the following um, if things are true, um, it will send an auto discover request to the um, to the exchange environment. So every time when a new profile is being created, a profile refresh is needed. Uh, periodic check uh, is done on the virtual directory URLs because um, these may change from time to time. Um, and anytime network changes are um, being being uh, pushed over um, the yeah, the environment, um, Outlook uh, will try to. Um, it will. Do an auto discover request um, to refresh the settings that it needs to have in order for it to connect to the exchange environment. So let's go back to our other drawing over here. There we go. So every time when an Outlook client tries to um, connect to the Auto Discover service, it will send an LDAP. Query to locate the service connection point. This service connection point, as they call it, um, uh, contains several values. Um, most importantly, um, there were two two values um, that are very important for uh, to locate the auto discover service. Um, the first one. Um, contains the auto discover URI. Um, so, which URL does it need to use to locate the auto discover service? And the second one is a setting which contains the site to which the auto discover service belongs and accordingly to the CAS, to the client access server, um, which is hosting the auto discover server. Um, because several uh, exchange environment or sites may exist inside of our forest. 
So it will need to locate the correct exchange server uh, for it in order to be able to um, connect to the exchange environment. Um, uh, but um, this is only true for domain joint machines um, because um, when you have an external machine that's not domain joint or so non-domain joint machine, um, it will need to locate uh, the auto discover uh, service on a different kind of way. So um, actually, there are several ways in which it can locate the uh, uh, auto discover service. The first one is the service connection point, as we saw earlier. Um, this is just uh, located with the LDAP query. It sends to the Active Directory and then gets returned with the value. Um, the second option for it to locate the other discover service, which is hosted on the on the client access server, is to query a DNS server for it. Uh, most of the time, an A record or a C name record will be created um, for them uh, that will be pointing to the client access service which is hosting the auto discover service. So um, if that doesn't work, it will do a HTTP redirect to the client access server. And if that doesn't work, it will try to locate a SRV record um, to also locate the auto discover service. So it actually starts with the service connection point uh, with the domain joint machine. Uh, if it's a non-domain joint machine, it will skip the service connection point and head straight to DNS record. Um, so the first one is the most favorable, and the last one is the less favorable. Um, if it can't locate the auto discover service uh, by using these four methods, it will fail and um, it won't be able to locate the auto discover service. So when it has, let's say, um, it located the auto discover service using the service connection point, um, it will um, be connected to the auto discover service. So at the moment, we're at this step over here. Um, the auto discover service then talks to the outlook provider service and will ask the Outlook provider service which settings are best to be used to connect to the exchange environment. So it will actually forward the request over here, as we can see. Um, the Outlook provider will push several settings to the Outlook client, um, like this. Um, of, yeah, yeah, it will first um, publish them to the auto discover service and the auto discover service will then send an XML request response to the Outlook client with the correct settings. However, um, three settings uh, will be pushed um, to the Outlook client that will be actually uh, done by the Outlook provider, which is based on Outlook Anywhere. Um, for a deal explanation of Outlook Anywhere, I will uh, set up a new video um, but for the moment, you will just need to know that Outlook Anywhere contains the settings um, which will be pushed by the Outlook provider. Um, actually, three um, it's these three settings I talked about are um, contained in three values, which is the uh, EXCH uh, value, the EXPR value, and the web value. Um, the first value is used by RPC clients. So if several if several settings uh, can be made against this value, um, which will be then pushed to RPC clients. For example, Outlook 2010 uses the RPC protocol to connect it to um, the exchange environment. So it will use these settings in the RPC uh, that, that are made against the AXCH uh, value. Uh, the second one is used for HTTP clients. Um, for example, Outlook 2013 uses each, each HTTP. Um, so any values containing in this record will be pushed to the Outlook 2013 clients. 
Also, um, web is used, um, but at the moment it's just Microsoft Reserve, um, which can be used to push the best URL to use for Outlook uh, web access. Um, but for the moment, you just need to know it's reserved and actually isn't used in the current environment. So. Um, the Outlook provider, um, as said, will um, push these settings uh, to the Auto Discover service, which will send an XML response to the Outlook client. Um, actually, the Outlook provider, when we're still here, it will do um, for it to be able to uh, know what settings it needs to, be, uh, needs to push. We'll use a, a service discovery against the active environment, the active directory environment. So um, Outlook provider does a service discovery against the active directory. The active directory contains several values um, which are actually uh, inside the Outlook Anywhere settings. Um, it will then do a response to the Outlook provider which will then uh, go through the whole process of uh, sending it to the Auto Discover server, and the Auto Discover server will do an XML response to the Outlook client. Um, all of this is done on uh, based on uh, on the email address that the user is using. So, for example, if it's using a Contoso, Contoso that com email address. The Outlook provider and the Auto Discover service will try to query the Active Directory, which is responsible for the for the Contoso.com domain. Um, if everything goes well, the correct settings will be supplied to the uh, client connecting to the Exchange environment, and the user is able to use Outlook, for example, to send and receive mail without having to go to several uh, yeah to several configuration options. So um, actually, as you can see, it automates a lot of uh, settings that won't be need to be pushed to the Outlook clients for, for it in order to uh, successfully connect to uh, the exchange environment. So actually, when it has been querying the Active Directory of yeah, well, the Auto Discover will query the Outlook provider, uh, which will use the service discovery against the Active Directory, which eventually will be uh, returned to the Outlook client with the correct settings, which then will be able to connect to the exchange environment to send and receive email. 